What's up guys, welcome to Neek which stands for nerd slash geek and these last two days have been two great days to be a superhero fan. Obviously we got Zack Snyder's Justice League and the first episode of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, I will be reviewing Zack Snyder's Justice League, that'll be my next video, but I'm gonna do this one first. And I was really looking forward to this show, I love the Captain America trilogy, Civil War might be my favorite MCU movie, and uh... Captain America is my favorite superhero, so I was really excited to get to see a sort of a continuation of that. So, what did I think about it? So yes, this will be a spoiler review, but if you want to see my quick spoiler-free thoughts, I did a review on Letterboxd. Basically, I really enjoyed the episode. I thought it was a really good start to the show that I think I'm really going to like. It handled the action well, and it handled the characters well, so I'm really excited to see where this goes next. So let's start talking more about specifics, and the first thing I want to bring up is the cinematography and the color grading, just all the sort of visuals, is some of the best of the MCU. The MCU isn't necessarily known for its cinematography, its visuals. Lots of people don't like the color grading it has in lots of their movies, where it's sort of like grayish, but... This one, I think all the people who complain about this aspects will really like in here, because not only does it fix the color grading problem, I really like how the coloring of this looks. It looks really well in this episode and also from what I see in the trailer, so they totally fixed that problem. The cinematography is just also really well. It's just shot. Um, and then the next thing I'll talk about is the action scenes. Now, there's mainly like one big action scene in this episode. We do get a little bit else, like we get the scene this nice scene where we get to see like the winter soldier through bucky's dream and that's just really nice to see get to see the winter soldier again like as the winter soldier because that's one of my favorite parts of the movie captain america the winter soldier when his music starts playing and he just like beats up the crap of it a bunch of guys that's always cool and we get a little scene there but the main fight scene here is this opening fight scene like plane falcon squirrel suit chase and it was handled really well. You couldn't really tell like this is like a TV thing. This feels just as big and cinematic as a movie and it looks as well. You doesn't seem like a more cheap version. It's just one of those fun like sequences that is a bunch of different parts. You get to see him fight in a plane. You get to see like them chasing in the squirrel suits. You get to see them like with missiles coming in. Like all the different things you want from an MCU action scene is in here it's just a really nice sequence most of the episode is set around building on the character of bucky and building on the character of sam they're separated in this episode we don't get to see him interact or anything but we do start to like start their journeys of this show both of them and i want to talk about bucky first and i love what they did with bucky and i can't wait to see them like keep working on him because they did some great stuff Bucky's like a very interesting person because he's like 100 years old and he like spent a lot of his life like not in control of himself, like not in his own mind being controlled by other people and he like was a like crazy killer assassin dude and then when he finally does get control of his mind in Civil War, it's like Civil War and there's like a bunch of fighting going on. Then he goes to Wakanda, gets a little bit of rest, but then Thanos comes back and he gets snapped out of existence, and then he has to come back and fight, and then after all that craziness, he's finally, like, back into the world where things have calmed down. And it's interesting, because he has the same struggle that Steve has, where he's, like, out of time, like, he grew up in, like, the 1930s and 40s, and now he's here, but then he also has the thing that he was, he wasn't in control of himself and he was like an assassin guy and stuff. So he has sort of both of those interesting things. And I really like how they s we sort of get to explore that in here. Like, I really love the scene with the therapist. Um, I thought it was just really well written how they did it. Um, and I like how the therapist sort of works in here. How she doesn't act exactly like a normal therapist. Because she knows how to, like, get at Bucky and s understand him. And, um knows how he does says and does things and then i also really like you get him hanging out with this old guy and then you hear him talking about his son who died and then in your head you like piece it together you know he's building amends from the things 
and then hear him talk about his son who died and like I just can't like imagine where Bucky is like sort of feeling right now and him trying to deal with all that stuff and then also I like how he does try to do something a bit more normal as says and he tries to go on a date and stuff so I really like all the stuff they did with Bucky in here and also really like Sebastian Stan's performance in here. And now I want to talk about Falcon. And Falcon wasn't as interesting as Bucky. Which I feel like that's a... With this episode, it is more Falcon focused. We get more Falcon than Bucky. And when he's not as interesting, that can be like a little bit like... Oh, I kind of want to focus on Bucky right now. But I did like quite a bit of the stuff with Falcon. I do like Anthony Mackie in the role. And he has this nice charisma and screen presence. And I like all the stuff with him at the beginning. Like... Of course, I said the action scene, which is just really cool. After that, you get to see him as, like, sort of, like, the celebrity guys people, like, notice him. That's just some interesting things there. Then I do like, like, this part that he sort of gives the shield up right now. He doesn't take it right away. And then his conversation with Rhodey, um, which, by the way, I really like that Rhodey is in this. It makes him to feel more connected when, like, a character just shows up like this. It makes sense why Rhodey would show up here, so, like... He's going to show up here. And I think with the TV shows, they have a lot of room to do this sort of thing because it's going to be like spanning over time and stuff and like a bunch of different things. Like they should just, if they're like Earth show, like they can just have the characters show up a bit in here and like an episode in here. They don't have to be like main characters starring in each other's movies. So I think it's cool that Rhodey shows up in here. Um, and I really like their talk, like really exploring some stuff with like legacies and symbols. And I think that's going to, go more into this later exploring those ideas which i think is cool and then i also like the end when you see the government like turn those back on sam and got this new captain america and i'm really interested in the conflict that is going to become that but that's not all we get with falcon we also spend quite a bit of time with him and his sister about their family business and stuff with like the boat and like family and i just didn't find that as interesting as the Falcon stuff, and wasn't nearly as interesting as the Bucky stuff. So as they're doing, I'm like, we could be spending time with things that are more interesting. So that was really my only problem with the episode, like, that we spent so much time on that sort of stuff. And then I want to talk about the blip, and I love how they're dealing with the consequences of it. Like, the villains are sort of based off of like, the blip is sort of why they do the thing they want to do, because they want it to go back to the time before the Avengers brought it back, and you have, like, the governments are all messed up, and, like, the all the sort of things are messed up, and it really makes the ending of Infinity War still work, because even though you got back all the people in Endgame, it doesn't mean all their problems are fixed. The world is at a very messed up, broken, lots of problem place, because they lost an Infinity War. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Comment down below, what did you think about the episode? Please like and subscribe, and keep watching Neek.